Two, let's take a look at how one could create a XAML browser application using Microsoft Visual Studio. We'll first start by creating a new project. And you'll notice that we have a project type here of Win WinFX applications. And we'll choose a XAML browser application. These templates come uh, and they can be installed through the Windows SDK. And uh, this goes ahead and auto generates a, a little project for us. And we'll do a little hello world here by uh, creating the, uh, the title of our application. So in this case, since I went to Thailand and Cambodia, let's just go ahead and write Thailand and Cambodia here. We'll go ahead and build and run the application. And you'll notice that we do see our text. Great. Let's go ahead and close that out and start building our UI. So we'll start by building a list box. And what we'll have in this list box is the, uh, the actual images that we can choose from. I'm just going to paste the, uh, the same XAML that we created in part one. Uh, but you'll notice a couple things, right? We have uh, here a hard-coded file path. And we don't really want to use that if we're going to deploy this to the web. So let's go ahead and create a new folder for the images. And we'll, what we're going to do is we're going to add the images themselves as uh, resources into this application. So let's go ahead and select all these images. And now we've got the images as part of the application. And let's just change the path. And what this has done is this has uh, embedded these images as a resource for the application. And when I run, I can now see that we do have the images and we're showing it. Great. But we have lost the text. And what's happened here is we're using a grid to layout. And by default, grid only has one row and one column. And since we have multiple content, they end up overlapping each other. Let's fix that by defining a few rows. The first row we'll define with a height of auto, which means it should size to content. And the second row will uh, leave blank, so you can just uh, size to take up the available space. Our title will take a grid.row equals 0, which means we want it in the first row, because this is 0 based. And our list box, let's go ahead and set its row to be 1, which means the second row. We'll go ahead and compile and run now. And what we see is now we've seen the title and we can also still see our, uh, our list box with images. Great. Let's get a little more sophisticated and we'll go ahead and set column definitions. And what we'll do is we'll define two columns. The first, again, we'll size to content. And the second column, we'll go ahead and, and let have the, the remaining space. Uh, now I want the title to span across both columns. So I'll set the column span property. And let's create a placeholder. here on the bottom, placeholder. And we'll tell this guy to go in the second column and second row. Go ahead, build and run this. And there we have our little demo UI. Let's add another property real quick. And I'm going to set the, the minimum height of this uh, application to 400 and its minimum width to 600. And this just ensures that uh, you know I'm going to need some assumptions here as far as how big my UI is going to be. Now let's uh, let's go ahead and fix this up a bit by opening it in, in Microsoft Expression Interactive Designer. So let's go ahead and open the project I've just created, and uh, we'll open the same project created by Visual Studio. And you see here we've got our application. Uh, let's go ahead and let's set a background on this application. Uh, I'll select the background property, and you'll see here we've got a, uh, a nice little gradient. Let's change the color a bit. Actually, I kind of like purple today. And now we've got a, uh, a purple gradient here. Let's zoom out a little. You'll notice we've got a purple gradient in our little layout. Our list box here is, uh, isn't showing the background, so let's change its background to transparent. And uh, Okay, not looking bad. Let's go ahead and uh, change this title to span across only two columns. And uh, I prepared beforehand a, uh, an image that we can use. We've got a map that I drew of Thailand and Cambodia. Let's go ahead and open this here. And you'll see that this is a uh, vector drawing. And we can look at the code here, and this is just, this is just XAML itself. So you'll notice that we have uh, a canvas with some property set on it and paths. And these paths aren't really meant to be hand edited. I did this in a, a graphic design program. But what's interesting about this is I can take this, uh, this map, I can select it, copy it, and paste it straight into my application. So now it's being laid out within the grid. Let's go ahead and resize it. And uh, I don't want to overlap this list box. So let's go ahead and add some margin up there. Uh, let's change the width of this Grid, and I'm going to do some artsy things like rotate my map slightly. 
And there we go. I've got a uh, border right now set on uh, on the list box. Let's go ahead and take that off. So border thickness set that to zero. Okay, not looking too bad. Let's go ahead and save. We can close. Uh, we can close Sparkle. And uh, we're back in Visual Studio, and you notice that it's told us that uh, the source file has been reloaded. We can go ahead and now uh, build and run. And great, we see our application. We've got like a new uh, UI. But you can imagine that, you know, if I were a real designer, or if you were handing off to a real designer, you could give them some of the, uh, your, you could share the same project, and be able to both work on it and each have their own part here. So we're going to obviously want to show more than one file. And uh, what I've done in order to, to help us here is I created a, an XML file we can use beforehand. So files.xml, let me go ahead and add that to the project. And this is uh, real simple. It's just uh, there's a files tag, and then within there, there's uh, just some custom pictures tags that will give a title, a link to the XAML file, and then a source for the images. And uh, let's start by displaying uh, what we have in those images. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to use the uh, within the page resources property and this what this allows us to do is set resources that the rest of the page can use and uh, I'm going to create an XML data provider source points to the file that we just created X key is the name that we can uh, access this resource later on so we'll call that files and then X path this is the default X path that I should use when uh, when accessing this uh, data data provider and we'll see we use here it's just standard XPath syntax, and uh, you use file slash pick, which uh, gets us all the picked elements that live under the files element. And let's hook this up to the uh, list box by first we'll go ahead and delete the image we currently have. And uh, let's set the item source property on uh, list box to will bind to the source. The static resource is files, which we just created. And uh, in order to tell the list box what it should display, I'm going to give a display member path of at title, which again is an X path just to the title property on this list box. If we build and run now, you will see that we now have, uh, we're now binding to the titles, but we've lost the photo representation. Let's fix that up by uh, creating what we call a data template. So I'm going to remove this display member path. And in this resources, what I'm going to do is create a data template. And the data template will be for anything of type pick, which again is the XML tag that we have in our uh, file. We'll paste back in our, our example that we created in round one. And now instead of using the this hard-coded image path, what I'm going to do is I'm going to bind to the X path of at source. So what this will do is for the data type of pick, we'll uh, bind the source of the image to be source, which again you see here has the right path. Let's go ahead and build and run this. And you'll see now I'm actually displaying my images, and these are bound based on this XML file. So that's the end of part two. In the next part, we'll look at adding some rich text support into our application.